Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello! My name is Caroline and I make sewing tutorials and sewing patterns to help you along your sewing journey. And for today's video, I'll show you how to transform a basic bodice block into a fitted bodice with princess seams. You guys have asked me how to make a bodice with princess seams a few times already in the comments, so I thought it was about time for me to introduce this style here on my channel. And it's really not that hard. I know that I say that a lot, but it's true. The alteration you need to make is quite simple really. And the inspiration for today's project is what the kids call old money aesthetic, I think. I have seen this term being used on TikTok quite a lot, but in the past, I don't know if it's still as trendy as it used to be, but it's still showing up on my Pinterest feed. So I got really inspired by that and I decided to make a dress that kind of fits this aesthetic, this style. It will be a mini dress with a fitted bodice with princess seams and a slightly flared skirt. My intention is to make it with a boat neckline, but you can make yours with an oval neckline as well. And if you just want to know how to make the bodice with princess seams, you can stop there. But I'll go further and show you how to make the pattern for the skirt as well to make it a dress. Now let's go learn how to make the pattern. We'll start with the basic bodice block. I have a full tutorial here on my channel where I show you how to make one using your own body measurements and I'm going to link it in the description if you guys want to check it out. It's a rather old video actually, so I cringe a little bit when I watch it, but I still haven't gotten the time to make another one. Eventually I will. But for this, you would need a basic bodice block with shoulder darts already. I copied the front of the basic bodice block to another sheet of paper so we can start doing the alterations. I made my princess seam ending on the armhole, so I'm going to find the middle point of the armhole opening. Measure it with your tape on vertically like this. Minus 11. And now we need to connect this point with a curve to the apex of the bust. This right here is a cut that we'll have later. And when we fold the shoulder dart here, it's going to transfer the dart to the armhole. I'm going to show you later, but first I'm going to finish with the skirt. I'm extending the central line here downwards, and I'm going to mark around 15 centimeters down. And connect to the waist so we can form the diamond shaped dart. Now from the waist down, I'm going to measure my hip height which is the vertical distance between your waist to the widest part of your hips. And I square it to the side. On this point here, I'm going to mark my hips measurement divided by four plus one centimeter for a seam allowance, but you can add as much ease as you want. And I'll connect it with a curve to the waist. Now from the waist downwards, I'm going to measure how long I want my skirt to be. I also squared it here on a right angle and I measured the same distance that we put on the hips downwards. And now it's time for you to decide how flared out you want your skirt to be. I think I'm going to try out five centimeters or two inches. And this part right here, you can just connect it on a straight line if you want, or you can make it a little bit curved here like this. I'm going to try the opposite curve just to see how it's going to look like, but you can just make it straight across and it's also going to look good. And here at the waist, I'm going to round it a little bit so it's not too pointy. And one thing you have to be mindful of is that it cannot be a straight across line here. You have to make it a little bit curved. You have to enter like two centimeters upwards in here. And connect it with a curve like this. Now we can cut it. Now we're going to cut the curved part that we made for the princess cut here. And here comes the part where I will transfer the dart. You just need to fold this part here. So we have to close this part all the way here like this. And now the dart went to this area. The bigger cup you have, the wider this dart should be because you're going to need more space. The bigger the dart is, when you sew it together, it's going to give you more volume. So if your dart is bigger, there will be more volume around here. But of course you cannot just fold it like this because it's not going to match, but the bigger the cup size you have, the bigger this dart is supposed to be. And when you fold it, it's going to open here. And now after we close the dart, we can start manipulating the neckline to alter it to how we want it. I want mine to be a boat neck style. So I'm going to give four centimeters for my shoulder I'm going to redraw my shoulder first and I'm going to make my shoulders four centimeters wide. Don't know if you can see properly. 
And I'm not going to lower here just because of the style that I want, but you can lower as much as you want and make the curve that you want here. And now once again, we can cut it. I'm going to cut everything and I'm going to discard this part of the dart because I'm going to make it into two separate parts. And when you're getting around here, make sure you're not leaving anything pointy like this. And I'm going to add seam allowance all around. Now for the back, we're going to do the exact same thing. You can make yours ending as we did on the front, ending on the armhole. But for the back, just so it changes a little bit, I'm going to make the princess cut ending on the shoulder line. So I just measure the front shoulder on the back so I know exactly how much I changed. And from the middle of the shoulder, I'm going to connect it to this point right here, the top of the dart. The back neckline is also optional to make however you want, but I kind of want to make it with a v-neck on the back, a very deep one that ends around here. So I'm marking around 24 centimeters downwards here, and I'll connect the shoulder to here. Now the issue with v-neck that's very plunging and deep is that sometimes you end up having some gaping around the neckline. So since I already know how much it ends up gaping, I'm going to take around three centimeters from the neckline. If you're not making it as a deep v-cut, you're just making it rounder here, you probably are not going to have to alter anything, but I'm marking around the middle. I am marking around three centimeters, half of it to each side, and I'm going to connect all the three points to the top of the dart. Later, we're going to fold this again. But just so you know, the skirt part is basically the same thing as we did for the front. The only difference that I'm going to make is I'm going to lower two centimeters at the center of the back. I'm placing the side front panel right here just so I can copy the exact same shape as the side of the skirt and exactly where it ends too. And now I'm going to connect it with a curve all the way to the two centimeters mark that we made. But try to make the center part a straight line, like this. For the back as well, you have to make it le the least pointy as possible. So I'm cutting this point here. And later when I add seam allowance, I'm going to add it here because it cannot be missing. And now I'm going to close that dart that I told you about. I'm going to close following the angle. And as you can see, the dart that I made here, when you fold it, it gets transferred to the shoulder. And I'm going to redraw this neckline here because the shape got completely changed. And now I'm going to add seam allowance all around on all four pattern pieces. I added one centimeter all around and I made sure to keep the lines that indicate the waistline and the hip line and the bust line, especially the bust line, um, because we need to transfer those marks to the fabric later on. So when we're sewing them together, they match because otherwise there's a chance that can be a little bit crooked. So this is the front pattern, the center front, the side front. I'm going to place the center front on the fold and cut one. The side front, I'm going to cut two. And this is the center back and the side back. I will add a zipper to the center back panel. So I'm not going to cut it on fold and you need to cut two of the center back and two of the side back and also transfer the marks. Now for the front, if you want to make this part really close to your bust, because this right here is the apex of the bust, right? You can just enter a little bit more here, like this. But that will depend on the shape of your bust. So I would kind of recommend making it while trying it on and pinning if you want to make it tighter. Just as an example, I have already made a twile. I didn't iron it beforehand, but it was like a test cheap fabric just to see how it would look like. And I sewed the zipper in the back as well. My fit was great, but in case you have a bigger cup than mine, it might be gaping a little bit here. You might need to take in a little bit on the neckline because of the difference of the full bust to the upper bust. That is honestly so different from person to person. So you just have to 
check it and I always recommend making a trial beforehand. For the fabric, I got this one right here. It's a 100% cotton canvas, I think. Uh, for the Brazilians out there, it's called Sarja and it's off-white and I think it's going to look perfect for this style. Initially, I had actually gotten this to make a jacket tutorial, but when it arrived, it was just too thin for a jacket, but it's actually perfect for this dress because it does give a little bit of structure. And for the lining of it, I got this 100% cotton as well, but it's tricolini. I think in English, you would call it cotton poplin, quilting cotton, but it's way more lightweight than this one. And both of them have already been washed, haven't been ironed yet. I'm going to do that right now. But if you're using fabrics with natural fibers in them, you cannot skip the step of washing, especially if you're making something that is tight fitting like this one, because once you wash it for the first time, it will most likely shrink. And if you make something that's fitted and it shrinks, it will probably not fit you anymore, so wash it. And since I got this one to make a jacket out of it, I actually got quite a lot. I think I got two meters of it, so I will definitely have some leftovers, I think as long as I don't make any major mistakes. So I was thinking about using the leftovers from this to make a vest, maybe? I think it will look very chic, but let me know in the comments if you would like to see a vest tutorial or if you have any ideas of what I can do with the leftovers from this. Now let's go iron and cut it. And now that everything is cut, we just need to sew them together. When you're pinning them together, please don't forget to match all of the notches. The bust notch, the waist notch, and the hips notch. And we need to sew the center fronts to the side fronts here. The center backs to the side backs, also right here. And once we're done sewing that, we just have to sew the front and the back panels together at the shoulder line only. I transferred the marks to the fabric by making small little cuts. They cannot be bigger than your seam allowance. They have to be very little because otherwise it can be a problem later. And now I'll match the little cuts that I made. Here are the bust, with the bust one. The waist one with the other waist one. And the hips one with the other hips one. And as you can see here, there are opposite curves. So you have to use a lot of pins at this part. And now we're gonna sew here. I made sure to iron really well all of the seams open. If you don't do that, it's not gonna look really good. And I also clipped all of the curved seams like this, so it would set better. And now I'll place the front right sides together with the backs. And I'll sew it at the shoulder. So this is what we have so far, the front and the back connected at the shoulders. But the back is still open, we haven't sewn that yet, or the sides. And I did the same thing to the lining fabric, which is a way lighter and thinner cotton than the outside layer. And I'm going to place them right sides together, matching the seams. And now I'll sew all around the neckline. I have clipped all of the seam allowance, especially at the front neckline because it's more curved. I also trimmed this part right here because it's really bulky. There are like four layers. And now I'm going to put the seam allowance towards the lining. I don't know if you can tell, but this is the lining. It's lighter and thinner. I'm going to put the seam allowance towards the lining and I'm going to stitch the seam allowance to the lining all around the neckline. This is called under stitching and it makes the lining stay inside, doesn't peek through later. You can top stitch it as well if you want, but I think it looks better when it's under stitch because the stitching doesn't show. Now we're gonna put them right sides together again. And we're gonna sew all around the armhole on both sides. 
Now you need to make small cuts all around the armhole because it's a curved seam, but make sure you're not cutting the stitching because then it's going to be a problem. And now we can try to do the same thing that we did, turn the seam allowance towards the lining and stitch it to the lining, but it will be impossible to go all the way around because this part right here is very little. So I'll try to go the further away I can, the closer that I can to the shoulder seam on both sides. And if there's just a little bit, it's okay because it's really impossible to go all the way around. I was only able to sew all the way here. This part was left without the understitching. And now I just have to turn the right size out. Probably gonna take a little bit of time. My fabric is really thick and the shoulder line is very small, so it's harder to pull it. But if your fabric is thinner or if your shoulder line is wider than mine, it's not gonna be as difficult. One side. And the dress is almost ready now. Um, we only have to sew the sides to each other and add the zipper to the back and hem it. I'm going to show you how you can sew the sides so it continues to be fully lined. And I think it's already looking so cute. After ironing the neckline, it looks way crisper and better. Now let me go show you how to sew the sides. You just have to open up the sides like this. So this is the front, the lining of the front, and this is one of the backs. And we place them right sides together. I am matching the underarm as well. So we're going to put the lining together with the lining and the outside layer together with the outside layer. And we're going to sew here at the sides from top to bottom. And we have to do the same thing to the other side now. So once again, this is the front. This is one of the backs, the center seam and the side seam. We're going to open it up and place it on top of the side of the front and I'll pin all the way down and once again you have to sew the entire side and I'm going to sew the zipper on off camera just so the video doesn't end up being unnecessarily long but I already have a video here on my channel where I show you how to sew an invisible zipper from start to finish it's very step by step so if you've never sewn an invisible zipper before I'm going to link it in the description so you can check it out but after I sew the zipper on all there's left to do is hem the bottom of the dress I'm going to overlock the edge together and fold it inside and that's how I'm going to hem it but it's very simple very straightforward and after that I'm going to show you guys how it turned out mm -hmm. 